Alhamdulillah, 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 Welcome back. So today we'll be doing from verse number 7, our bookmark guide. Yes. Um, it's... Let's see. Verse number... Chapter 67, verse number 18. Uh, where we start. I think 19? No, 18 is where we... Yeah, if we finish 18, we start. Yeah. So we got to start at 19. Okay. Nice moments. Very good. All right. So before that, I'd like to remind to take a moment or two just mm -hmm. contemplate on how it was our last week, right? Especially when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? You can obviously, ideally when you go home or whatever you want to do in a, a specific time, you think about every area of your life, including your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relationship with your family, your relationship with yourself, your own health, your well-being, your mind, your emotions, as well as your physical health, and you know your finances and so on and so forth. So that's a good way to capture how am I doing in all those areas and you know make goals for next week. Ideally you want to do that daily, right? <laughs> but at least once a week, right? So that's something to think about. So when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things to consider would be how often was I aware of Allah, right? What did it do to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I consume any content? Did I read Quran? Did I read, listen to a beneficial reminder, something that tells me about Allah, something that reminds me about Allah, about the hereafter, about the power of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, the mercy of Allah, right? So obviously, us getting together, this is part of it. Friday khutbah is part of it. But what about Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? What, what was I doing, right? Privately or in a class setting? And then, it could be, the next thing could be how many prayers, how many meetings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did I attend? Right? What was the quality of that meeting? You know, what do I need to figure out? Right? You know, do I need to be doing them in time? Or was I late? Was I too distracted? You know, things like that. So if we focus on them, and then we start seeing, okay, this is my gap. This is what I need to improve. This is how I can improve it. Inshallah, it will happen. So definitely take a moment to to think about that, and then uh, we'll move on to the next verses. So it is. Uh, Salim. So is Jason bringing you or are you bringing Jason? Uh, Jason bringing me. <laughs> Mashallah, it's, it's going reverse now, right? All right. So we are at verse number 19 of Surah uh, Al-Mulk, chapter 67. And I was just reminding the brothers to take a moment to think about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that last week. You can retain that. <laughs> so I don't get... Okay, this minute. So let's please start with uh, verse number 19, please. Yeah. So the first one? Yeah. yeah. Chapter 19. 67. Okay. So we stopped at, we finished 18 last time. And we're going to start with 19. Uh, no, 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 no. So that's chapter. Okay, this is. So you, when you click here. Oh, no, okay. So you go back and see so if you go to chapter right here. Everybody else got it? Yeah. Um, Okay, 67 here, right? So this is the chapter we're reading, oh. the kingdom, Al-Mulk. And then we are on verse number 19. So part of that is what Muftar will do at the jail as well, inshallah. All right, so 19. Okay. Do they not see the birds above them, spreading out your wings and folded them in? None uphold them except the most beneficial Allah. Early is the austere of everything. Okay, so when we talk about our main intention is to try to drive action points from this, which is how can I, what can I learn from this verse that can help me think, feel, and act better. Okay, so let's see what have you got. Please say what would you what would you say about that from this verse, inshallah. Yeah, I lost it. Okay. Six, uh, 19, right? Yep. It was 69, right? 67? That. Alright. Oh. Did you go back again? No, no, my phone actually. Oh, okay. Back itself. Okay. There you have That's it. And. Uh, oh, it automatically did that. Yep. Why? I have no call. Okay, nice. So, yeah, just keep scrolling. No other button. There you go. You 
just keep thinking. Jason, you got any point? Uh, about the verse? Yeah. So I think what it means, it, it shows like how Allah sustains and maintains everything in the, in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he says like how Allah keeps the bird up with like gravity or, you know, and how he designed it to fly and stuff like that. Okay, great. Yeah, so anybody else? I'll go with Jason. You can add, man. <laughs> Just don't, don't stay behind Jason. Yeah, that's, that's true. So basically, I mean, like, you know, in a general sense, I think when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about his creation, like one of the things that we can reflect is that it helps us to, I would say from a perspective of feeling better as well, that, you know, you realize the power of the Lord that you worship, right? And one of the ways that you can facilitate that is now with all the advanced information that we have, if you go and just look up different things about the birds, you know, it's, it's really amazing, right? The amount of distances they can travel, the amount of intelligence they have, right? How they migrate from season to season, the distances that they travel, right? And then you think about it, like these are not random things. Allah, you know, planned and designed it in that manner, right? And then... You know, so that's one aspect of it. And then the sustainance aspect of it, what Jason mentioned, that how Allah makes a way for these birds to get their risk, right? So we're not planning them that, okay, let's create a welfare system for the birds, make sure everybody's eating, you know, the money is coming and whatnot. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning for them. Obviously, there's a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. But I don't want to get into that because I just want to keep it directly in, related to, so that when you do that at home, you have something to take away from, right? Uh, there's another important thing here. It talks about Allah. So some verses would directly talk about Allah, right? Especially at the end, and we need to pay attention to that. So it talks about two things about Allah. What are those two things, you say? Uh, is benef is benefic beneficent? Yes, yeah, so number one, He's very merciful, right? So I should never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Yeah. And as we heard in the khutbah today, every decision that Allah makes, also has mercy behind it. So even though we might see it as painful, it has mercy behind it because Allah is always merciful. Right? Um, that's that. And then there's another thing it talks about as well. He sees everything. He sees everything. Right? So whether we are in private or public, right? If we do some good and people don't appreciate it, who has seen it? Right? So typically, you know, we do want, let's say, you know, if you're a charity, you're an acti activist organization, you want to do marketing, right? Because you want your donors to see what you're doing. And you want your volunteers to see what you're doing, right? And people want to come here, right? And then donate or work with you or volunteer with you. But even if it doesn't happen, you know, even if people does not appreciate, do not appreciate you, do not agree with you, including your family members, who is the one who's seeing it? Allah. Allah, right? And likewise, if there are enemies that are plotting against you, who's seeing that? Right? Amazing. Okay, Sam, please. Who is he besides the most beneficent that can beneficent that can be an army to you to help you? The disbelievers are uh, disbelievers are in nothing but delusion. Okay, great. Commentary. So, yeah, so it says basically that he's always going to be beside you to help you. He will always protect you. From what I get from this, mm -hmm. and the disbelievers are just delusional. They will. They won't see it. They won't, they won't believe it of you. Right. Anybody else? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, she protects you from from the enemies. Right. So I think yes. Yeah, so in a way, it's a it's a question too, right? Something to ponder mm -hmm. about because sometimes we try to think. You know, from 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? So I'm going to think, okay, I want Muhtar to be on my side, you know? And and I keep doing that in a way that I forget about Allah, right? So the point is that even if Muhtar is with me, all of you guys are with me to support me in some any plan or any activity I want to do, right? But if Allah is not with me, it wouldn't happen, right? So that's something to always remember. So yes, I need friends, I need allies, and I need supporters, you know, I need job, I need clients, whatever, but at the end of the day, if Allah is not going to support it, or protect it, or grow it, it wouldn't happen, right? So it kind of helps you to pause, so sometimes we are too much into that, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4, that we forget that divine element, right? And then, in terms of delusion, yeah, so what kind of delusions are people into, right? They're always thinking about, like, okay, I'm only going to see what I can see and touch, Right? Which is a delusion, right? That thinking that this is the only, you know, you live only once. That's a delusion. Right? Allah did not create people that they can live and <clears> once <throat> and then, you know, do whatever you feel like doing and race after whatever you want to race after. And then everybody would be dust and as if nothing happened. Right? That is very disrespectful and be 
not befitting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, uh, Salim, please, next verse. Uh, or who is that to provide for you? He would, would help his provision, but they have persisted in isolence and over, over. And this one is talking directly about provision, sustain it. And, include, and remember, we were talking about it last time that everything I have, I want, regard, you know, including physical things, emotions, uh, wealth, status, whatever is. If everything is created by Allah, owned by Allah, and Allah is the one who can increase it, decrease it, or take it away. So this one is specifically talking about risk, which is provision, which includes everything. It includes not just the food, but wealth, emotions, family, relationships. It's all part of risk, knowledge, wisdom. It's all part of uh, risk. Okay, and then we'll do the last one with Jason, inshallah. Then Mukhtar will recite the four words for us. Give me that. Then is one who walks fallen on his face better guided, or one who walks erect on a straight path. Okay. Right, so this is now talking about the one who is basically on a straight path, obeying Allah, putting everything in perspective, right? So you're not neglecting the creation, you're not neglecting the 2 plus 2 equals fall, the material world, but at the same time you're not neglecting the most important thing, which is your relationship and submission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being on that straight path, understanding that you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the Lord, right? As opposed to thinking the opposite, may Allah protect us. So we'll leave it at that, inshallah, Mukhtar can recite the four verses. Hmm. Oh, there you go. And uh, from where? Okay, so this is from Awalam Yaro. Awalam Yaro? Yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور أمن هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل في عتو ونفور